even Manos, the hands of fate, can be analyzed from a feminist perspective. Yes, even Manos, the hands of fate. It has a narrative structure in there. It can be analyzed. Hopefully. We're almost there, honey. Just a little while longer and your vacation starts. I'm getting cold, mother, and hungry. Okay, so it's basically this horror story with a 1966 American family being contrasted against this evil polygamist cult that's associated with Mexico. And it has a sort of then-modern feminist angle where the family in 1966 is contrasted with the bad gender dynamics of this polygamous cult. But it, of course, in itself suffers from sexism that's visible from our modern perspective. Okay. Okay, so the story has this family, this uh, 1966 white middle-class American family going on this vacation into Texas. And they get lost, and they have to ask directions from these teenagers who keep making out, and they give them bad directions or something, and they get lost, and they end up at this house that shouldn't be there with this creepy Igor guy named Torgo. And Torgo tells them that they can't stay the night, that the master would not be happy. The master doesn't like children. But the boss, the, the father, the patriarchal gender <laughs> structure of the family, the patriarch, he, Michael, uh, tells Torgo, uh, come on, let us stay the night. Uh, your master will be okay, come on. The wife, Margaret, tries to persuade the husband, Michael, not to uh, have them stay the night there. But he's like, oh, come on, it'll be fine. So Torgo says, ah, whatever. And they go into the house, and then they see this creepy painting that depicts the master and his dog. Uh, Torgo describes how the master has left this life but he's still here among us, and he likes you. And other creepy stuff. And the dog shows up at one point, and it looks like the sweetest dog ever. And okay, it's supposed to be creepy. Creepy atmosphere. <laughs> and the kid goes missing. The little girl named Debbie goes missing. So they are forced to stay the night as they're looking for their daughter. And uh, at one point, Torgo tries to sexually assault Margaret, and in the slowest sexual assault scene ever. And Margaret says that uh, she'll tell her husband if Torgo doesn't stop, but if Torgo stops, she won't tell him. And Torgo uh, accepts this and stops. And Margaret seems to follow through on that. She doesn't tell Michael about the sexual assault. And this is the uh, 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 disrespect of the female character. She's treated as this uh, sexual object coveted by men. Yeah, there, there's kind of this uh, modern 60s sense of the uh, uh, woman who uh, is respected for all the 60s had to offer of that sort. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Torgo's master awakens. He was dead, but now he's not. And it's because he worships Manos, this masculine god. Manos gives him power through sacrifice. The master sacrifices people, and Manos gives him everlasting life for something, and also he has these brides. This harem of beautiful women that uh, I guess are brainwashed by the power that Manos uh, gives him. The women have this big heated discussion. A child will grow up to be a woman, and as they open up the wide by the man that she lives, and he has a man who will be brought here even to kill. A child will live 
They can't kill her because she will grow up to be a woman, and Manos loves women. Love here being in the sort of selfish, collectible way. Uh, Manos lets uh, the master collect women, and this honors him, Manos. I guess. Um, it's not the selfless type of love, actual love. It's more, uh, I like that. Let's bring it over here. Then there's this big struggle to escape the house, and there's a cop who seems like he'll get involved, but then he doesn't get involved, and there's all this stuff that happens. To make a long story short, the master wins. Michael seen at the end uh, as the next Torgo. Both Margaret and Debbie are enslaved brides of the master. And so it's a downer ending. So yeah, it uses elements of misogyny to um, uh, bring out the, this uh, horror element and make the viewer uncomfortable, if not actually scared. But of course, uh, the show also perpetuates sexism. Like, imagining the viewer to be in the male position of wanting to protect the women more than um, wanting the women to succeed because they're uh, humans deserving of proper respect and everything. Again, it's Manos, the hands of fate. So, yeah, filter it through that. And there's also this kind of xenophobia to the plot, because it's implied that the Manos cult is Mexican. There's some references made to them being near the Mexican border. Of course, Manos itself is Spanish for hands. So, it's kind of the good Christian American family versus the evil Mexican polygamous cult that victimizes women and children. The hands of fate have doomed this man. Thy will is done. I don't know. It's a stupid, stupid movie.